obviously Greg Moore did did pass away, you know, far too early. Uh, you knew him well. Um, what do you what do you remember from him and that weekend and, and how that whole thing progressed? It was a crazy weekend. It was a uh, it was a weird weekend and it was uh, it didn't feel right from the get go. Greg was uh, and it, it's funny because it, it was often like that. It's almost like life was trying to tell you something and Greg you know got a in a crash on his pit bike you know hit a car and and then uh, damaged his uh, thumb and and then they gave him some pills and then he kept going and he already had a contract with Penske very lucrative contract too with Penske and he didn't have to do that and then all these things came together and and he just lost it in the race. I saw him coming in the mirrors and uh, he started at the back and I could see he was coming and he was outside ah, wide open. And, and Greg, when he crashed, always uh, held it wide open mm -hmm. and uh, always rotated the car. Remember in Japan, he did it a few, a few times and woo, rotated the car and didn't hit the wall. And that time he was uh, coming up to speed and then that's why the blow was so violent. He held the throttle wide open and the car just rotated but kept accelerating. Yeah. So he hit that wall so hard and it was like an explosion. And the next lap I came in, I not came, came around, I looked at the back straight and we couldn't tell which car it was. So I looked at the tower and I saw Greg's number starting to go down. And you knew that the guy was who was in that car was severely uh, injured or or died from it and uh, funny enough just before they went back to a uh, green flag uh, my car had uh, an electrical issue everybody thought the team pulled me in to stop no it just had an electrical problem and it just shut down that was it just just before i pass pit entrance the engine just shut down and i tried to restart it there was nothing and i just coasted to my pit box and then once i got there the team said well, we're not gonna fix it, so right. we'll just get out. And I got out, and mm -hmm. that's when I learned uh, Greg was in a very bad shape. Right. How did that affect your mindset going forward when it came to what you uh, guys did? It did. It did. You know, funny enough, a lot of guys, uh, some guys passed away and and died. And I remember that year I moved to Vegas from uh, Indianapolis, and uh, it was just a weird winter. It was. Uh, it was different. It was one of the toughest thing I've uh, I've ever experienced in racing, and it was not like it was like you know it was like my God, you can that's it done. Then we never thought that Greg could die doing this. Greg could get out of everything. You know, he was like uh, super fast, super human. He was the best at everything, and uh, it was a bit of a shock. So that. What was bad, I think, is if you go back racing the next weekend, then you get it out of your mind, you go back in it and go back racing. But uh, that was it. That was the last race of the season. And uh, all winter, we had to uh, live with that. And after that, it was different. Yeah. So you never thought about, you know, maybe ending your career earlier? No, you never did think about that uh, back then. But one thing is for sure is uh, when I got to... Uh, the IRL back then they're much safer nowadays but uh, when I got to the IRL back then and saw Kenny Brack and these guys and get injured like that and I did a year and I said uh, after I saw a Briscoe crashed at Chicago yeah. was sitting in the grass the car was like half split in half and I could see his legs on the grass he was lucky he had the, almost nothing just broken shoulders yeah. and uh, that's when I said uh, that's it yeah, indie cars, that's it for me, and I stopped after that. I've never been in one since.